Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, signal processing, nonlinear systems, machine learning, optimization, etc. This particular tutorial is dedicated to the problem of sketching a Nyquist plot of a transfer function of a dynamical system by hand. Besides explaining how to generate a Nyquist plot. In this tutorial, I will also explain how to generate a Nyquist plot in Python by using control systems library for Python. This is an open source and free library that can be used to test the stability of a dynamical system, to synthesize a controller, to generate Nyquist and body plots, etc. Before I start, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this video tutorial. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start. Here's our transfer function. And here's the Nyquist plot of this transfer function. By the end of this video, you will be able to sketch this Nyquist plot by hand and you will also learn how to plot this Nyquist graph in Python. The first step is to derive the sinusoidal transfer function. We obtain the sinusoidal transfer function by substituting s by j omega in our transfer function. Here, j is the imaginary unit that is it's equal to square root of minus one and omega is the angular frequency after we substitute as by j omega we obtain this expression four over two plus j omega obviously this transfer function is a complex number that depends on omega. Every complex number has a real part and an imaginary part and it can be represented as a point in a complex plane with its real part and with its imaginary part. Our next task is to compute the real and imaginary parts of this transfer function. What is the easiest way to do that? The easiest way to do that is to multiply the numerator and the denominator of our original transfer function, or better to say sinusoidal transfer function, by 2 minus j omega over 2 minus j omega. Obviously 2 minus j omega over 2 minus j omega is equal to 1 and nothing changes. However, by multiplying the denominator by 2 minus j omega we will get rid of the complex number in the denominator. Consequently, we obtain the following expression. In the numerator we have 4 multiplying 2 minus j omega. In the denominator, we have the following expression, 4 plus omega square. Consequently, our sinusoidal transfer function can be written as follows. 8 over 4 plus omega square minus 4 omega over 4 plus omega squared multiplying j. From this expression, we can observe that the real part of our sinusoidal transfer function is equal to 8 over 4 plus omega squared. The imaginary part, on the other hand, is equal to minus 4 omega over 
4 plus omega squared. These expressions are necessary for sketching the Nyquist plot by hand. The Nyquist plot of the transfer function W of j omega is a path in the complex plane that the sinusoidal transfer function describes, or better to say, the path that this complex number describes when omega is varied from minus infinity to plus infinity. In practice, we only vary omega from zero to plus infinity. And we sketch the part of the Nyquist plot corresponding to these values of omega. The other part of the Nyquist plot is simply obtained by mirroring the first part of the Nyquist plot with respect to the real axis. To sketch the Nyquist plot, we will construct this table. The first column of this table corresponds to characteristic values of omega. The second column corresponds to the real part of sinusoidal transfer function and the third column corresponds to the imaginary parts of the transfer function. Let us start from zero. When omega is zero, the real part is obviously equal to 2. You can obtain this real part by substituting 2 for omega in this, this expression. The imaginary part is equal to 0. Consequently, our plot starts from this point on the real axis. And over here, it's always a good practice to change the color and to specify the value of omega. Omega is equal to zero. The second characteristic point can be, for example, omega is equal to one. When omega is equal to one, the real part is equal to 8 over 5 and the imaginary part is equal to minus 4 over 5. Eight over 5 and minus 4 over 5 correspond to a point somewhere over here. This point is obtained for omega is equal to 1. The next characteristic frequency is omega is equal to 2. For omega equals to 2, Obviously, the real part becomes 1 and the imaginary part becomes minus 1. The point 1 and minus 1 is this point over here. This is 1 and this is minus 1. And this point is obtained for omega is equal to 2. Another characteristic point is obtained for omega is equal to 4. For omega is equal to 4, we have that the real part is actually 2 over 5 and the imaginary part is equal to minus 4 over 5. This point is the point over here. And this point is obtained for omega is equal to 4. You can also construct other points by varying omega. You can take some other characteristic points, for example, 
omega is equal to 5, 10, 15, etc. However, we can clearly observe that as omega increases, the real part decreases and the imaginary part increases. Imaginary part is negative, so its absolute value actually decreases. The final characteristic point is infinity point, that is, that's the point for which omega is equal to infinity. When omega is equal to infinity, obviously, the real part becomes zero and the imaginary part becomes a small negative number. When I say a small negative number, I mean a negative number that has a small absolute value. And consequently, this is the point obtained for omega is equal to infinity. The final step is to connect these points. And I will use green color to connect these points. So this is our first part of the Nyquist plot. The second part obtained when omega is from minus infinity to zero is simply obtained by mirroring the first part. Here I'm trying to mirror the first part. And this is the final form of our Nyquist plot. Here we go from zero to plus infinity and over here we go from minus infinity to zero. Okay, so that was our Nyquist plot. Next, let us see how to precisely draw this plot in Python. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm using, using the control systems library for Python. This is an open source and free library for control system design, analysis, and this library can also synthesize a moving horizon estimator or even a model predictive controller. To install this library, you basically need to create a Python environment. In my case, I'm using the base or root Python environment you open a terminal and in that terminal you need to type pipe install control. This command will install this library and you need to import this library. But before that, before doing that, let me erase the workspace and let me clear this workspace. Okay, so the first step is to import the control library. The next step is to create our transfer function. First, you need to create a complex variable, s. Then you define our transfer function, 4 over s plus 2. And notice over here that this syntax is very similar to MATLAB control systems toolbox syntax. So if you're familiar uh, with control systems toolbox, you can easily change and you can easily adapt yourself to this library. Next, we import the plotting library and with this command over here, we plot the Nyquist plot. Finally, I save the figure to this file and I show the plot. So let's execute this simple code and voila, here's our Nyquist plot. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.